Hi guys, Dr. Paul Zamella, Dr. Z here, and today I'd like to address those people that have low back problems and my patients that have low back problems. I frequently get asked about what exercises to do, what stretching activities to do, and my response now, after 35 plus years in the practice, is I tell patients straightforward that I'm not going to show them exercises or stretching. And of course they look at me kind of astounded and I say the only way I'll show you is if you promise me you'll do them. Because I found over the years that I spend five, eight, ten minutes showing patients exercises, things that they should do to help themselves. And human nature as it is, they are interested, they're uh, sincere in wanting to do it, but two or three days later, they stop doing them. And so I try to get some kind of a commitment. So I tell the patients, nope, I'm not going to show you. And they say, yeah, why, why, why? They're confused. And I say, because you're not going to do them. And they say, oh, I'm going to do them. No, you're not going to do them. I promise you I'll do them. Oh, okay, well, in that case, then I'll show them to you if you promise. And then I, I, I tell them that I'm going to check on them in a couple of days and make sure they're doing it. I usually don't check on them, but at least I try to threaten it with them anyway. Uh, so anyway, here's what we do for low back exercises. There's a nice site. There's a whole lot of sites that show exercises, but this site that I found uh, is, a, is a basic exercise, low back exercise site. They have lots of other good things on the, on the site too. So you can find uh, more than just low back exercises. I'll list the link for the site in this blog post. But it's N-I-S-M-A-T dot org. And so today we're going to look at different exercises. And uh, the basic exercise is common exercise that most of you know. In fact, a lot of these, are, there's nothing special about them. They're kind of common sense and probably you've done them over the years. But the first one is knee to chest. As the picture shows, you're bringing one knee to your chest, and you have to do all of this according to what your body says you can do. You don't force it. If it hurts, you don't do it. Just because I'm telling you you should do it, if your body tells you you shouldn't, then you stop. Uh, but what you do is you bring your knee to your chest. Now, there's two ways of doing it. Uh, you can grab under your knee and pull your, your leg up, as the picture is showing, or you can grab on top of the knee and draw your knee up. It really has to do more with your comfort and your flexibility. And, and actually, quite honestly, your weight. If you've got a big tummy, it's a little harder to do this. But it means you need to do it. Uh, so you bring it up one knee, and I like to encourage patients to do this very slowly, in, in almost slow motion, so that you stay relaxed and, and, and kind of peaceful as you do the exercises. So you slowly draw your leg up, and in like slow motion, you grab behind your knee or on top of your knee, and then start gently pulling it to put the point of resistance. And then you hold it for, it says here, for about 30 seconds. Most people can't do that. It seems like a forever for them. And in the beginning, you probably shouldn't. You should probably start with something 20 seconds, let's say. And usually, about 8 or 10 or 12 seconds into this, the resistance starts to relax and you can pull your knee a little tighter. And that's a good thing to do, so you should try to do that. And hold it, and then when you let go, you also let go in slow motion. And then you draw the other leg up the same way, just repeat it with the other side. Again, in slow motion. And then, it doesn't show it here, but what I tell patients to do is you do one knee, the other knee, and then both knees. Uh, and bring them both up, grab them. Usually you can do underneath or on top, and then you hold the same, same exact procedure. Hold it for 15, 20 seconds. Uh, each maneuver works a different part of the pelvic, pelvic area, 
lumbar, the lower back area and stretches it really well. Uh, it, it feels good, you'll like it. The spine likes to be stretched like this. The pelvic tilt, which is the next one, your, the ladies are more familiar with it, but anyway, the, uh, the pelvic tilt is you're basically trying to, you lie flat on the floor and you try to flatten the, the, the space of the lower back against the floor. And you hold that and then you re release it and you can do that several times. Hold it, release it, and again holding it for 15 to 20 seconds at a time and that stretches things out pretty good. Hip rolling. Now this one is a little more aggressive and it's not for everybody. Uh, it's an excellent, an excellent exercise. Or it's not even an excellent, an excellent stretch. Uh, there's a distinction between exercise and stretching. Uh, when patients ask me what kind of exercise they can do, usually they're asking me about stretching. Uh, but in this case, what you're doing is you're swinging your ne bent knees to the floor and at the same time you can twist your body in the opposite direction. You don't need to do that. What I like to do sometimes is just suggest that they outstretch, the patient outstretch their arms while they're lying flat on the back with their knees up using your outstretched arms as kind of an anchor and then rolling your hips, swinging your knees to the floor and then back one side then back to the other side and relaxing the lower back the whole time and try to let the weight of the legs be what draws the legs to the floor. Uh, however, if you're having a particularly sore, let's say more than a sore back, uh, on a scale of one to ten, sore would be like three or four, that's okay. But if your pain level, your discomfort level is above a six, probably this isn't for you. Uh, you're probably too sore to be doing this one. Uh, but as soon as the, the discomfort diminishes, so where you have mostly some soreness and tightness and stiffness, this would be particularly good for you. So again, you can attempt it, but if it seems like it's not good, don't do it. Also, just start this one with just a few uh, stretches uh, and see how your back responds to it. Because this is a little more aggressive, this is not one to be overdone. However, one could easily build up to 25 to 50 repetitions of this. It's extremely good for the lower back in loosening the joints, the facets of the spine, and stretching the ligaments. But again, caution on this one. The pelvic tilt, again, this is a great exercise. Stretch. This is, this is actually more of an exercise because it's using muscles to do. You're not stretching as much as you're just using muscles to the pelvic muscles to lift the pelvis off the floor as this picture represents and you hold it for about five seconds uh, as they they suggest here so you're you're relaxed you push off the floor hold it your stomach your abdomen the core muscles are being used here your abdominal muscles are holding the buttocks muscles are contracting it's a good exercise and again according to your your dis your discomfort level. Uh, don't force it if it's hurting. Uh, and probably doing uh, this uh, well five times maybe. Uh, it doesn't have to be done a whole whole lot of repetitions. Lower abdominal exercises. Uh, these are just bringing one knee to the chest. You hold it in that position and then you lower your leg to the starting position uh, then, then it, it progresses to B, which is more the more common one, where you bring your knee up, uh, extend it up towards the ceiling, and then slowly lower the knee to the floor. That's using your lower back, your lower back muscles, and you do one knee, one leg. I'm sorry, one leg, and then the other leg, and you try to, as it says, to. Uh, Maintain the pelvic tilt, keeping the resting leg relaxed at all times. Don't hold your breath. Keeping, breathe normally. So a lot of times you'll catch yourself holding your breath as you're trying to do an exercise that needs some sort of stress to it, some strain to it. So you don't want to do that. You want to 
keep breathing relaxed in a relaxed way. Uh, curl ups or crunches, abdominal crunches. This is an actual exercise. I prefer to, to have the legs bent more at a 90 degree angle. And uh, you can have your, your, your arms across your body or you can have your hands behind your neck or head. Uh, but at no time when they're behind your neck should you clasp your fingers because what you end up doing as you're trying to do repetitions is it gets harder if you have your fingers clasped you'll end up pulling on your head which could damage or injure your neck uh, because we're, we're not after forcing the exercise we're after making the abdominal muscles work and if they're getting fatigued you're doing the job and then just stop so uh, this is a great exercise, this is a classic exercise for, for strengthening the abdominal muscles. This is a common exercise that's used in the cat and the, and the camel, used in yoga, which incidentally is great, is an excellent uh, form of exercise and stretching for anyone that's reasonably healthy. Although I've had a lot of patients over the years that have come in because they have hurt themselves doing yoga and it's usually because they're trying to keep up with the class and they shouldn't be because they need to be going at their own pace uh, but this picture is pretty pretty self-explanatory you let your lower back sag and then you curl it up with your head going down it's a great stretch it feels really good to do now if your back is particularly sore bending it down or letting it curl down can aggravate it so you got to watch that if it's not particularly comfortable to be doing. This part of the curl almost always is comfortable. <laughs> Tail wagging. Uh, um, I'm not sure what this is about. Uh, let's read it here. Floor the shoulders as far as you can. Slowly repeat the starting. Keeping your shoulders still. Move your right hip. Oh, I see. Okay. You're just wiggling your tail. You're wagging your, your hip to one direction and then the other direction. Uh, which is just simply flexing the, uh, the 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 side muscles and ligaments of the of the lower back area. So you're just wriggling back and forth. Uh, that's one I'm not really used. So you can wag your tail all you want. See how it feels. Don't force it if it hurts. Hip extensions. This is a good exercise. It's used a lot in uh, in yoga. Uh, you you're on, you're start on all fours and then extend one leg behind you uh, and you hold it and again, again you've got to have the strength to do this uh, this isn't for somebody who's significantly overweight and doesn't really have the, the strength or maybe the elderly older person who doesn't have the upper body strength to support themselves so uh, be careful and as it, as it cautions at the bottom of the, of the do not cause pain so if this is hurting don't do it uh, but you, you extend one leg, hold it, and then bring the other leg down. Does it say how long to hold it? I would hold it for a count of five. Like 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, 1,004, 1,005. And then bring it back down and then repeat with the other one. And do it this maybe five repetitions uh, on each side. This is a great exercise. Uh, again, this is, most of this stuff is yoga-based. Um, you're on, you're crouched down, again, depending upon your, your physical condition. And your arms are stretched out as far as you can go with your head bent down and letting the shoulders stretch, letting the lower part of the body stretch. Uh, I have, unfortunately, at my age, am really not able to, actually because of my knees, I'm not able to really let my buttocks connect with my heels any longer because it hurts my knees too much. Doesn't matter, just stretch as best you can. And it actually ends up, when I do this, to be a great stretch for my knees. And then you go, uh, you extend up onto your, on your, onto straighten your arms out, the elbows straight, and uh, push up basically. And then from that position, you allow your body to sag. Now, a 20 year old can do this one. Uh, if, if, you're, if you're over whatever age, I don't know, if you're over 45, you're going to start struggling with this, unless you're in particularly good shape. I can't do this. Uh, it's a little, my, my back with my athletic injuries doesn't allow me to, to get in this 
ideal pose. Although the stretch is good, if if I get halfway this way, it's still it's still helping me. It's still stretching me. Uh, this is similar. Uh, you're lying on you lying on your stomach, uh, on, on with your weight on your forearms, and then you push up, and you hold it to the count of five, uh, one thousand, one thousand two. Uh, and as you as you improve or progress with all of this stuff, you increase the the time you're doing it. Uh, but this is a great spine stretch. Uh, a press up is uh, your your lying flat. Your your palms are on the floor. Your 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 hand, your elbows are on the floor, and then you just press up, allowing your back to arch. It's much the same as this, except your forearms are on the on the uh, the, the mat. Uh, this is a back extension. This is a great exercise if you can do it. Uh, your, as, as the picture shows, you're, you're just basically your arms are your side and you're trying to lift your chest off the floor. And they say, they say your shoulders, but the idea is that you're trying to lift the shoulders and the chest as much as you can. Now you won't be able to go very far at all. But the point is, is you're contracting the lower back muscles as you do this, and the buttocks. And uh, so you're contracting the muscles, they're getting an exercise. Uh, arm lifting, this is the same idea, you're just lifting your, your arms above you, and you're contracting lower back muscles. You hold it for a count of five. Uh, as they say, the thumbs are pointing towards this, the ceiling. Uh, Oh, uh, listen, they're doing one arm at a time. Oh, they're doing lift one arm with your hand position so the thumb, keep your thighs and the opposite arm relax. So you do one arm and then you do the other arm. Uh, there, there's multiple variations of this. Uh, hip extensions, as the picture shows, you're lying flat. You lift one leg up so the thigh lifts off the floor. This is not easy to do, actually. Uh, and, and if you're having back trouble, it can be a strain to the lower back. So be careful with that. A knee push-up is the classic push-up where you're on your knees and you push your chest up with your knees staying in constant contact with the floor. It's a great way to do push-ups until you strengthen your upper body enough to do the following push-up, which is here. Uh, uh, this is not for everybody. It's those that are in better shape. You don't need to do this. and it, You get a better exercise if you can, but this push-up here is adequate. What I liked is talking about push-ups because it helps the upper body significantly. Uh, the shoulders, uh, the chest, of course, the shoulders and upper uh, shoulder blade muscles go into play, which is very important. And it's also working the neck muscles because your neck is, your head is supporting your neck is supporting your head as you do this. But for those that are starting out at, at not in the best of shape, you can do this exercise. This push-up down here can be done with your hands on your kitchen counter and pushing off the corner edge of your counter. Uh, and so it becomes much easier. In fact, the push-up can be done if you're truly really trying to rehab yourself against the wall with your hands against the wall, your feet out from the wall, and you're pushing against the wall. It's actually fairly easy to do, very, quite easy to do actually, but for those that are really rehabbing, uh, it's not that easy. And you start there, and then go to the kitchen counter, and then as you get better with that, you can go to something lower. The lower the object, the harder. Go to the, in, in, the arm of your sofa, the edge of your sofa, or a coffee table. And then you can get down to the floor, but you, you'll find that you'll strengthen yourself significantly doing it the, the, the way I'm describing, just doing it off a, a kitchen sink. Trunk rotation. Oh, this is simply, uh, you're on all fours, you're reaching your arm across and to the other side of the leg. It's just a stretch. It's not. It's not a particularly significant uh, stretch, but it works. And you're using the abdominal muscles while you're doing it. Uh, it. They're all good to do. So just give it a shot. Uh,
full back release. I tell, I show this with patients all the time. This is a great stretch for the lower back that can be done in a chair at your office anytime uh, at work. You're just simply sitting, just simply separate your legs, let your body hang between your legs, and try to drop as low as you can in a very relaxed position. And you just hold it 10, 12, 15, 20 seconds if you want. It's a great stretch. An upper back stretch is just like the picture shows. You're just stretching as good as you can. You can do the same stretch standing. In, 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 in yoga class, they, they frequently start this warm-up by just reaching towards the ceiling as high as you can go, uh, just stretching yourself as much as you can. Uh, side bending, just as it shows, you go as easy as you can. Uh, you do this very relaxed and just let your body stretch. It's a great stretch. Backward bending, your hands are on your hips, you stretch backwards. Uh, and don't force it but let the body stretch and, and let it do its thing. It'll tell you when you've gone as far as you really should go. And you just try to, and you can push against your pelvis with your hands while you're doing this. But don't force it. And then also if you're a little unsteady, uh, you can lose your balance with this one. Uh, so if you have any issues with, uh, with balance, this is maybe one that's not such a good one to try. Uh, you can, well, frequently people when they're in fairly good shape will push like the picture shows and then also looking up towards the ceiling that gives a little more looking your chin up your chin up when you're doing it, it gives a little extra stress stretch but be careful with that uh, the 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 pectoralis stretch as they call it your chest the pectoralis is your chest uh, this you're at you're, you're standing in the corner of the uh, of a room and you hands in the corner just like it shows and you lean into the stretch I should have closed Skype, that's Skype you lean into the stretch and just let it stretch the, if you have shoulder problems this is a great stretch by simply putting your forearms do the same thing your forearms on the wall your hand and your forearms and just stretching into it it's a great stretch for shoulder issues that's it. That's 23 exercises, a whole lot of stuff. Again, I'm only showing these to you. You can't watch them unless you promise to do them. But uh, the website is nismat.org, and uh, I'll have that link below in the in the uh, the blog post. So until next time, wishing you. Good health and wealth, Dr. Z signing off.